A 78-year-old client has been hospitalized for the past week for evacuation of a subdural hematoma after a fall. Immediately after surgery, the client was alert and oriented with right-sided hemiparesis. The client's speech was slurred, but client could communicate needs without problem. The client was continent of bowel and bladder most of the time, and began rehabilitative therapies. On the third postoperative day, aspiration pneumonia was confirmed by X-ray and the client was placed on IV antibiotic therapy. Today the nurse reviews the last entry in the nurse's notes for an update of the client's condition. Drag, or select, client findings from the choices below to fill in the blanks in the following sentence. Correct answer. Immediately after surgery, the client was alert and oriented, communicative, and continent of bowel and bladder. The client began rehabilitative therapies for right hemiparesis and dysarthria, slurred speech, but developed aspiration pneumonia for which treatment was initiated. One week later, the client's level of consciousness changed from alert and oriented to drowsy and oriented. A decrease in level of consciousness suggests that the client is likely clinically deteriorating. And this change would therefore be of immediate concern to the nurse. The client is less communicative and incontinent, which are also significant changes that would concern the nurse. The elevated temperature could be related to cranial surgery or could be caused by an infection. The client's arm weakness was present after surgery, so that finding is expected and not concerning. The client's breath sounds are obviously improved as a result of treatment with antibiotic therapy. Bowel sounds are normal and expected at this time. The nurse reviews part of a nurse's notes entry for a 48-year-old client admitted to the inpatient psychiatric unit after a suicide attempt. Which client findings are of immediate concern to the nurse related to risk factors for additional or worsening pressure injuries? Select all that apply. Correct answer. The nurse recognizes that the client is at high risk for additional or worsening pressure injury due to a number of factors. First, the client already has a stage 3 pressure injury which resulted in full thickness skin loss and infection. A local infection can lead to systemic infection and possibly sepsis, a potentially life-threatening health problem. The existence of a pressure injury suggests that the client is vulnerable to skin breakdown. As a result of the client's accident, the client has impaired mobility and is unable to walk. Impaired mobility is a major risk factor for skin breakdown and would be a concern for the nurse. Using a sliding board for transfers can lead to skin friction and shearing, especially due to decreased skin sensation. To add to impaired mobility, the client's skin is frequently soiled by urine and feces. Excessive skin moisture is a major risk factor and would therefore alert the nurse that the client is at high risk for skin and tissue breakdown. The client is not an older adult, meaning that skin should not be thinning to make the client vulnerable for skin integrity issues. Weight loss and fair appetite are likely not of concern at the moment because the client's original weight is not known and quadriplegics have better mobility at a lower weight. The client's ADL dependence is expected and would not cause skin integrity problems. The nurse reviews the nurse's notes documented by the nurse from the last shift who was assigned to care for a 70-year-old client. The client had a right day two days ago and is planning to be discharged tomorrow. For each body system listed below, select the client findings that would be of immediate concern to the nurse. Each body system may support more than one client finding, but at least one option should be selected for each system. Correct answer. The client is getting ready for discharge the next day but begins to have new onset of symptoms. The cardiovascular findings that are of immediate concern to the nurse are the significant changes in verses.
The client became hypotensive with a BP of 98.50 seconds of a millimeter Hg. The oxygen saturation also decreased from 93% to 88% on raw. Although the normal oxygen saturation is 95% or greater, it is not unusual for a 70-year-old client to have a 93% level. However, 88% is too low and is of major concern to the nurse. These changes suggest possible clinical decline. Although HR increased, it is not considered tachycardic. The major neurologic change for the client is increased right surgical hip pain. The client should be having less hip pain when preparing for discharge to home. The client's anxiety may be due to increased hip pain, impending hospital discharge, or decreased oxygen saturation, and therefore is important to the nurse at this time. New rapid onset of difficulty breathing and tachypnea, RR is 26 BPM, could indicate PE or other cardiopulmonary health problem. Increased respirations are the first sign of a client's clinical deterioration. Many clients who experience a PE also have chest pain and cough. But this client denies chest pain and has only a periodic cough, which could be the result of sinus congestion, dry throat, or allergy. The nurse reviews the admission note for a 13-year-old client in the urgent care center. Select four client findings that are of immediate concern to the nurse. Correct answer. The child experienced new GI symptoms two days ago that included anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and elevated temperature, fever. These findings are significant and of immediate concern to the nurse because the child could become dehydrated and have electrolyte imbalances. Having dark urine is also of concern because this finding could be due to an increased bilirubin caused by liver inflammation or dysfunction. The child's diarrhea is not concerning at this time because it is only occasional and commonly occurs in children with GI distress. Fatigue and desire to sleep are expected because of the client's GI symptoms and would not be of concern for the nurse at this time. A low sodium and or potassium level can cause fatigue, malaise, and weakness. Hypovolemia caused by fluid loss through vomiting, combined perhaps with occasional diarrhea, can also cause these symptoms. The child's poor eating habits can be addressed later and are not a part of the nurse's current concern for planning care.